welcome back. In this video, I am going to be shaping the braces on the back of the guitar. Now, I will be refining this later after we've done the same process on the top, but I want to use this almost as a dress rehearsal, really, for, for the, the tuning of the top. And for that, I am going to be using some software. Uh, this is the Peterson Strobo Soft. Now, you will have seen me use the iOS version of this uh, on my iPhone in previous videos, but the Mac OS OS X version of it has some added features um, on the screen here. I'll show you all this later. Um, we've got a spectrum analyzer, an oscilloscope, pitch graft, pitch, <laughs> pitch graph, not graft. Um, facilities specifically designed for luthiers to help tune, tap tune uh, guitar tops. So I thought I'd give it a go. Now, a warning first. I'll repeat the warning that they have on their website, to be fair to Peterson. Um, they state that this is not compatible with the latest version of OS X Mojave. Um, this is April 2019. Um, I think I've got an up-to-date OS X on here. Um, and according to Peterson, this shouldn't work with this. This is down to 32-bit compatibility. Apple are going to be removing 32-bit compatibility from their operating system. Um, it does appear to work uh, at first sight. Uh, I need to do more investigation. But um, just a warning, it might not work for you. Uh, don't take my recommendation and go off and download something which Peterson themselves say is not going to work. They're going to be producing a new version of this in summer 2019, but we seem to be in a bit of a limbo period at the moment where there might be compatibility issues. Um, I guess we'll find out when I've uh, done a little bit of learning. So I'm going to go away for a, a minute, uh, probably a couple of hours, um, and we'll come back and hopefully I will show you this working. Um, see you in a minute or, or an hour. Right, I'm now an expert, maybe. Um, for this demo, I'm just going to use my little Lavalier mic. This seems to work perfectly well. I've just got it clipped onto the uh, constraining board I've got. Ultimately, I'm going to have this anchored down because that's more realistic, because clearly the, the edges of the back are fixed. But for a quick demo, I'm just going to be using the free plate tap, like so. So let's have a look how this works. Right, so what do we have here? We have two tabs. Normally, for general tuning uh, functions, we're going to be on note cell, uh, but we want tap tune. And the two main controls, really, apart from turning it on with the power button, and there's also a tap tuning enable, but quite why you'd have it on the tap tune screen and not have that enabled, I don't know. Um, as you can see, it's recording all sorts of things at this point, uh, but let's put it onto tap tune enable. This just enables this control. And what we have here is a threshold. So it only records once the sound gets above the threshold and my voice is getting dangerously close to triggering the microphone. But you can adjust that so that it only triggers on the tap tone. So that's really all you need to know. Um, oh, average taps. If you select something here more than one, it will actually take your four taps, throw away the the one that it thinks is uh, erroneous, maybe. Um, although I haven't had any real erroneous taps. Um, but this will average, I think, three out of those four taps. So let's see how it works. We'll hold our plate up and we tap. And as you can see, that's captured the first one and we just do it another three times. And what you can see on that fourth one, it's now taken the average and we have a pitch that is just slightly more than G-sharp, um, which is around the 400 kilohertz mark. This is the main peak. There is, seems to be a, a peak below that in order to interpret what these peaks actually correspond to, as you can see there's a, a peak around 100 hertz down here, really speaking you'd need to do a Cladney, a Cladney analysis to see which mode these are referring to, but the strongest resonance is that 400 hertz 
and 440 is A and so 400 Hertz as we can see is just a little bit below A uh, just above uh, G sharp. Um, in future I'd like to be able to interpret the oscilloscope display as well because this gives us a little bit of information about the duration of that tap. We want something that really rings. At the moment it's quite, it's quite short. But that largely is it. So that's our initial data and we can come back to this once we've shaped the braces. have this flat on the desk I've effectively got an air, air cavity so the tap tone is lower than if I've got it off the desk so I'm, I'm just going to keep this off the desk because I think that will give a, a more realistic um, tap tone without the air cavity and an uncoupled uh, tap tone. So repeating that uh, constrained handheld mic um, Yep, we're all set to go. And you can see that we've got a very different result. Although where it's put the frequency peak is it doesn't quite look right to me. It's it's put the X a peak down. Uh, I, I'm reading that as 200 but it's got it around the 180 mark. It's got it just below E, which uh, I, I don't think that's quite right. I would, have, I would have said this is the peak here. But as you can see, this gives a very different result. The, the, the resonance is much lower because we've got more of a monopole here and the monopole is, is really the fundamental frequency. If I look back at the, the previous results, you'll probably find we do have a 200 hertz frequency in the free tap. Um, but it's one of the, the lesser frequencies. This time it's the 200 hertz which is dominating. This is the first chance I've had to use this chisel. Um, it was a useful find in the bargain bin of my local DIY store. I think they'd had it years. I actually reversed the bevel on the end. I hope I don't come to regret this because this will be used in pairing mode. Uh, we'll, we'll see how I get on. So now I can reveal what the mystery tool is for. Two videos ago I showed making this and it prevents me cutting too deep. It gives me exactly 3 or 3.1 millimeter depth for the um, end of the brace which is going to get notched into the linings. And now the end is a template for when I notch the linings.
So let's see how that's affected the resonance. It's not just the frequency that's changed, there's a big difference in the sustain. A similar picture here to the free plate, but look at the huge difference between the free plate and the constrained plate. This is why we constrain it if the frequency is going to have any meaning. That's it for now, see you in the next video.